Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a game from Carabus Games, and it is called The Pit the Board Game. This is, of course, the beta version of the game, and it plays from one to four players. You're going to play, be playing as one to four Soul Force Initiates, and you're going to be going into the pit, where you're going to have to defeat and slay tons of monsters while going through tons of floors. Or at the end of the pit, you're finally going to come across the things called, oh, the Zul Lord and and the Zul Guards, which you're going to need to defeat, and there will be a final battle at the end. You'll be using your characters and your character boards to roll dice, to move across the floors, the corridors, as well as going into the different locations to acquire different things. There's crafting in the game, there's finding items, there's using stuff for such as rations and all that kind of stuff, as well as trying to survive while getting to the end of the fifth floor in the game. Now, of course, what I have here, like I said before, is the prototype of the game, so it might be a little different, but nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and show you what we got here for the game The Pit. So here we have the contents for The Pit, the board game, and as you can see, this is just a portion of it. We're gonna get to the other side in a second here. Let's go and discuss what you're gonna be getting in the game. Well, as you can see, there's different characters here. You got yellow, red, green, and white, along with their pawns and uh, little little uh, chits here. They're gonna be moving across the board. You're gonna be having these locked rooms, as well as these unexplored hallways, and when you explore them, you're gonna pop these open and choose to go to these different locations. And of course, there's the locked and unlocked aspects of these. Over here are the X decks, and these are ones you can actually search through. So whenever something tells you to search through a deck to get a certain item, monster, or skill, you're gonna go over here and do that. They're basically like shopped, except for the monster deck. You've got room cards. They're gonna start off with these ones here that you're gonna be placing down on the board. That are gonna be different locations. What uh, enemies are gonna be there, what kind of loot and all that good stuff. It's a good stack of cards here. They'll always be different. You're gonna also be getting these uh, ex uh, player reference sheets for your monster fate dice, your player fate dice, your player conditions, and your turn summary. Of course, you're also gonna get your marine as well as your different skills and whatnot that are going to come with the character. These are all the different monster decks from A, B, C, and D and depending on the level of difficulty and how far you are across the floors is typically going to be dependent on the types of monsters you're going to be using from these different decks here. you got the items decks over here, A, B, C, and D, which is the same reflection of the monster deck. You're also going to have system administration cards that you're going to flip over depending on the floor and different statuses and effects are going to happen uh, based on that different location, as well as like some things, sometimes nothing, like these guys here are gonna have positives and negatives, as well as, of course, the level exits here. You're gonna have this little track here, which is gonna demonstrate the monsters are walking through, and where they're gonna get released, and they're gonna go into the board somewhere. And then what's really nice about this entire board here is it has little explanations of each of the different phases and what happens periodically through them. So let's go ahead and take it over here now on this side of the, uh, the, the board here. And as you can see now, uh, you're also going to get a pl plethora of different uh, chits and tokens. These are damages. Over here you've got poison, you've got radiation, all types of different status effects, burning. You're going to be using these ten-sided fate die over here. You're going to be using these defensive green die and then red of these um, offensive red dice over here. Each player is going to start with their own specific cards. You're going to have items on the left side here. You're going to have the weapons and your armor over here on the bottom left-hand side. And then the bottom right you have skills and recipes. These little green icons are going to display where your health, your food, and your ammo is going to be, as well as the different skills you have, Might, Finesse, Brains, and Psy. Each character is going to be getting uh, all of these different items, and they're going to be different for each and every character, as well as a skill cost, and then of course their uh, damage, their defense, and uh, their skill dice. They're going to be added whenever you're in combat or uh, using your defensive abilities. Finally, you're going to be getting a box, as well as a rule book that will come, not like this, this is the prototype, but something like this in which you'll be explaining the game. But, oh, and these two six-sided dice, which you'll be using to move the monsters around the board and whatnot. But overall, this is for the most part where you're going to be getting the game, the pit, the board game. You got a good look at what the game is going to come with, as well as the setup for the game, but we'll get more into the setup when we go back below when I start discussing how the game works, basically through a little walkthrough of the game. But we'll talk about turn summary really quick. First of all, you're going to decide who gets to go first. You're going to roll dice and set them aside from one to four, uh, depending on the number of players, of course. If it's just one player, you can probably make up your own turn order. Turn order. And then you have this little turn summary. You get the player action phases in which all players will take their actions based on the one through seven. And then, of course, you're going to um, go to the following phase, which is the monster 
a phase. We'll go the, over these really quick. There's movement, which is pretty simple. You're going to be able to move your character from one hallway to another, from the start to a hallway. And then you're going to reveal monsters in the hall. If there is any monsters, at any point, you're going to stop and have to engage them. If not, you can keep going. You can reveal the room. Uh, you can unlock and enter a room by rolling dice. You can reveal um, room monsters. And then, of course, you can perform any room functions, provided all monsters are destroyed. And then eat food. And eat food is important because at the end of every round, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be hungry. You're not going to eat. And if you ever go to zero, you're going to be in trouble. So you have to make sure that you're always keeping yourself fed. But like I said, the most important thing is whenever monsters engage, you have to stop and you have to fight them. You get one attack on a monster, and then it's going to be the next player's turn. After everybody's had their turn here, they're one through seven, you're going to go to the following phases. You have the monster phase in which all monsters will attack. Then all monsters are going to move down the wandering track. And no monster can move past the first monster that is the closest to the release. You got special action phases, which let you do specific green actions on your character board here, such as, uh, oh, I don't know, lockpick set or uh, eating food or whatever, disarming, uh, whatever. It's all these different things here, which I'll talk about later. You got the looting phase, which is if there's no monsters in the room and you got loot there, players, based on the um, order in which they walked into the room, are going to secure loot one piece for each player. And then you have determining the next player order, which I believe is either rolling the dice like it's listed at the beginning, or it's simply going to be to switch the player. So if red went first, red will end up going last. After that goes ahead and takes place, it goes back to the next player, and the game continues like that. As you go throughout the different rooms, you're going to be unlocking them, going through the different hallways. You can always choose to not enter the rooms and simply go to the next level of the game. But as the floors continue to increase, the difficulty of the monsters will as well. And after the last floor is there, it's something really interesting and unique that happens when you have to actually fight these Zool Lord, which I'll talk about down below as well. But overall, that's basically how you play the game and how you set it up. Let's go ahead and show you in a more uh, in-depth detail as to how it all works. So here we are back again, and I went ahead and set up the different room cards. There's going to be different number ones on them, which will indicate that they're the starting ones. Remove the rest of them, shuffle the deck here, and then you're going to get your rest of the rooms for your uh, other floors, two, three, four. And um, depending on if the game goes more. I think it's just one through five, though. I think this is actually removed. This is only from the prototype, so I think it's just these five floors. But that's just fine. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and now start the game up by rolling the dice to see who goes first. I just went ahead and picked these spots here, uh, which is where the characters are going to spawn at. And they're simply going to start in turn order. And uh, we'll begin. So movement. You're going to move into an unexplored hallway, moving this thing down, and choosing any of these numbers. So you can choose any number you want, and it's up to you. Then sometimes it matters depending on if it's a room or the hallway. Next, after you've been done that, you can go ahead and choose, well, you have to go ahead and, sorry, roll a die. It says monster appearance rule. So we'll go ahead and start roll the die. You got a one. When entering an unexplored hallway, roll a d6, and a result of one, there's no monsters found. That's great. So I rolled a one. But let's say I rolled a five here. It says I'd have to place a monster. Well, based on the floor, one through four, it says which monster to place. From the A deck, you'd have to play a monster out. And if you played a monster out, that would be the end of his turn in which the movement phase would end, and he'd have to actually go straight to the attacking phase and he would go ahead and fight this monster. But luckily for him, no monster spawned, so he's going to move on. Now, he can go to a new hallway because this one is, uh, is empty. He can try and find another one if he wants. He can go over here and uh, uh, do the unexplored hallway here and simply roll again. And he got a five, so he'd have to fight the monster if he wanted to go there. Uh, based on yeah, one th two through five, play a monster in the hallway. Um, but if he never found any monsters, technically he could walk over here to the level exit and he'd actually get to go to the next floor. And if that happens, the system administration card would pop up if everybody wanted to go to the next floor and uh, all the monsters would be harder and something new and interesting would happen. But that, that is not usually what you want to do in the game. Actually, what you want to do is once you get through an unexplored hallway after defeating all the monsters in the hallway, you want to uh, look and see what's inside the, these rooms here. And this happened to be a rat den. Well, the door is locked, as you can see. And it requires zero hits, so that's nice. The door's easy to open. Normally, it'd be dependent on your finesse skill or whatever your uh, lock picking ability is, and you would have to go ahead and roll. So maybe if his lock picking was a two, and then he had a finesse of two, he would roll all these dice here. And based on what you need, zero hits, he has four, so that's enough. He would unlock the room. And that would simply go boop, and now it's unlocked. And then, if you chose to unlock the room, you cannot go over here. You have to actually go into this area. And you can go to one, two, three, or four. One means you're going to be getting the items faster. You're going to get to choose between all the items. However, four means you're more likely to be... Um, uh, you're going to be, I guess, less likely to be hit or something like that. Or more likely to be hit here, less likely to be hit here, but you're going to get to choose the items here. There's some kind of fashion in which it works. This is actually a, uh, an ability of the room. It has you uh, forge skill roll every four hits. It rewards you two item cards from the deck A. One person can do that. It also say here that you can have four pieces of loot, and it tells you, based on the floor level, which, of course, is the floor one area, that you get four A items here. And it also tells you that you have one A enemy on this floor. And when it's interesting, whenever you have an enemy enter, 
enter a room, you're actually going to roll a die. And depending on the card here, so this one here says plus three plus, there's going to be an ambush. And the ambush means the card the enemy is going to start face down, which you're actually not going to be able to attack the enemy if it's face down, so that they'll actually be able to attack you when they flip face up, which is going to be after everybody has taken their turns. However, if it wasn't rolled a three plus, if it was a two, the monster would flip up and you'd see what it is, how much health it has, its attack die, its defense die, and its fate die, as well as its abilities, right? It can move one, it has a distress call, it can summon a Zool up. Also, there's room abilities too that involve the actual room being nasty to you. This is spawn a brood mother and two rock rats. Well, you're going to go ahead and take these X decks whenever you have to search for something, check these things here, and you're going to have to go ahead and summon them. So here's two rock rats, and then you have to go ahead and find a brood mother as well. Let's see if I can find one really quickly here. Maybe I passed it up. I don't know. There's, there's quite a few of them. Here it is. So now there are all the monsters there, right? Whenever monsters spawn, that's going to stop the movement phase and it's going to enter the attack phase. And that would be based on the number of what, what weapon you're using. So you can choose a ranged weapon or a melee weapon as well as uh, uh, any of your different uh, defense, or not defense, sorry, your armor and whatnot. And you're going to roll these dice here, which I'll explain in the fighting aspect later over there. And you're going to roll the dice. And if you're able to defeat them by doing oh, enough damage, you will actually kill them, of course. So if, uh, just for instance, a basic fight is three dice, maybe has three red. This person has a one green, so that's going to block one. That would do four damage to it. You put four damage on this little thing here, and that would signify that he is fairly close to being dead with, with two more health left over there. Um, they also have their all their own unique abilities, like Swarm. You can combine all the R dice with Rock Rats for one single attack. So all the Rock, uh, rock Rats could simply roll four dice and make one single attack on somebody. And it also tells you uh, what they start, uh, where they start attacking at. So this one starts at three, while this one starts at four. So that's kind of how they basically start attacking. Um, and of course, you cannot use the, the room ability or actually acquire the items until you just defeat all the monsters in here. Whenever you finish your turn, you're going to move that little token there over to the side which indicates that you've finished your turn and the next player is going to get to go he would go into here and he could simply choose an explored hallway he can come up here and fight um, it's up to him really he'll go over here maybe he'll go over here he'll roll the die to see what happens he got a three which means he put a monster in play this thing flips over in which case he would fight this monster and see what happens if he's able to defeat this the next player would be able to get to go in and it would continue like that you can go into each of these different rooms and they're going to have different rooms here they do different things this is a cafeteria here's another rock rat, rock rat den and what else do we got here uh this is a supply room right it tells you two plus hits to unlock this and these are just one hits and like i said you can continue going down these hallways and eventually you're going to come across the ability to flip this over but so after every player has taken their turn we're going to move on to the next phase which is going to be the monster phase and monsters will be able to attack the players based on what it says here this says a two so we go to two okay then it would go to one because nobody here he would attack he would use five red dice and he would use four fate dice as well, which um, you would have to go ahead and roll and see what happens and do the damage to the, the character. So everybody's going to be attacked by the monsters, including if there's only one guy here, all these guys are gonna hit this guy, which is pretty nasty. So I guess we can go ahead and look, make it look like this. So this guy's head popped off and shipping. It just kind of happens with prototypes. But after all the monsters are finished attacking, the next phase is going to be actually this thing is going to move. And it's going to be based on the number of players. And, you know, roll a D, a, a D, oh, this D, this red die here, plus one for every single player in the hallway here. And roll it and see what happens. This is going to show five. One, two, three, four, five. Whenever there's not a monster uh, that is on eight, you're going to spawn a new monster. Then depending on the floor is the type of monster you're going to spawn. And if there's multiple monsters on the board here you would roll for each of them but remember let's say this guy got a two so he went from here to here and this guy got a seven he would stop here so they're not actually able to crop they can't pass each other and whenever one of these pops out a new one is going to pop out as well so you're going to cont continually get more monsters spawning and once it gets to this point here which is the release point you're going to roll a die on a one it goes here two three four five and a six it actually just disappears and then after that is special action phases, which I'll, I guess I'll talk about a little bit over there. There's the looting phase, but there's no monsters here. You get to go ahead and select the different pieces of loot based on the number order in which you're in. And then, of course, determining player order for the next turn by, I, I, I simply did it like this. Uh, it would probably be different in the rules for the pro, for the, the full game, but I would make it like this. So that way the players continue to stay in order. But it might be we actually simply roll dice and change the order like that. Then you would repeat the process. So let's go over here and show you the player boards and maybe a, a turn or two of combat, just so you get an idea of how that works as well. All right, so we're over here on the player boards now, and as you can see, you got the three different characters and all of their boards set up, along with, we're gonna be having these three monsters. Now, because I don't have a lot of room here,
here. I went and switched it up. These guys are actually technically on the rat den still. So I'll go ahead and bring that over here so you guys can see it. And uh, they are fighting the players. And all of the players are currently on the uh, different player board areas here. We'll just go ahead and take these guys and put them on here. And they're going to be fighting, so each player is going to go. We'll start with this guy here. Now remember, once you finish your attack, that's the end of your turn, but I'm just showing you how combat basically works. You're going to select uh, these three guys here, pick which one you want to fight, and you're going to look. So we have the red player here. Oh, wait, I should have the red player. Uh, well, let's go ahead and take this white one here. Uh, so we have, let's say we'll start with the green guy here. So the green guy wants to fight the brood mother here, right? He's going to then choose one of his weapons. He's got a combat baton. He's got a transfuser. He will select, let's go with the combat baton, okay? This one says it stuns organic targets or it will do two hits against machine types. Ooh, and this one over here says special take one HP from an organic target and transfer it to a player. No, we'll go with this one here, the transfuser. So it says he's going to get two red plus this one as his base, which is going to give him three red dice here. And then he is going to get special dice, which is one, two, and three, three fate dice. And he's going to simply roll them. This is his combat, and he's going against the broodmother here with one defensive dice. He'll take this and roll it. That's one defense. He had his one attack, which is blocked. And then he's got these fate dice. And fate dice are pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and look at the player fate dice board. As you can see here, it shows that the 10 is a special trigger, which means he gets to suck a life from the uh, bat and give it to himself if he had the ability to gain health. And then he's got four here, which does nothing. And then he's got one, which is uh, one, which is nothing as well. And so that's basically how combat would go. He would actually just suck a health. The broodmother de de blocks the attack and his turn would end. The next player would go and do his stuff. And then finally he'd get to here and he'd get to attack a monster as well. So we've got white, um, oh, sorry, that was white, actually. I was actually even using the white's board. We'll do green now. This is now green. <laughs> okay, uh, so now we'll do green. Uh, this one here, he's got his Vibro Knife, grants a special damage, plus one AP to uh, one hit. And this one here is range, make a special second attack with this roll. Okay, so we'll do the pistol. The pistol will take three of the red dice, along with one more for his base. And what's this say? Once per turn, he can make a fate roll on a special trigger, cancel an ambush on all monsters in the area. Okay, that's pretty cool. Whenever he actually uses a gun, though, it says it's going to cost certain bullets, so he'd actually lose a bullet over here. And he'd also get one and two fate dice, and he would roll. He's like, let's go ahead and choose something easier, like this little rock right here. He'll roll it. He's got two, four, and six, plus a five and a one. The five is a special trigger, and the one is nothing. His special trigger is going to be make a second attack roll, and this special attack can only occur once. So he'd actually get to go ahead and attack again if he wanted to, but he doesn't even need to. This has only got three health, so it would simply die. And that's how combat would work for this guy as well. You've got these special lock picking abilities, uh, lock pick and forge you're going to start with, but you can actually purchase them along throughout the game. And then over here is the lock pick set and reinforced rations. And certain ones we're gonna, are going to actually have charges, the recharges and three charges that you can go ahead and use throughout the game until they eventually run out. This one will actually give him food, and this one is something that can bypass electronic locks. Pretty useful, right? Also remember whenever you use your guns it's going to make you lose these little points here and whenever at the end of every turn you're going to lose a food so every turn that you go you end you're going to lose a food and you have to use rations and whatnot to go ahead and uh, increase your food value up throughout the game as well as these fake dice based on the blue you're going to be rolling in to increase your uh your damage, hopefully. However, on the fate dice uh, tra trigger he's over here, you've got some things that are bad and some things that are good. Sometimes the damage to your weapon can occur and sometimes um, extra resources you can gain or combat mastery, so on and so forth. Not only that though, but the end, whatever monsters are left, so let's say these two monsters survived and during the monster phase, the monsters will actually get to attack and it's like, okay, a four. So we got yellow over here. He's gonna attack with his three red dice and then he's got three of these fate dice. We'll look at the monster fate roll. That's going to be one, two, and three. He's attacking yellow. Yellow's got a defense of one and two and three. So he's going to get to roll his three over here. Oh, nice. So he blocks all three of those. We also have the monster fate dice, which is a four and a five, a nothing and a combat mastery. Convert one miss into a hit, but there is no misses. So that would actually cancel the attack out. And then the next monster you get to attack and all monsters attack just like that. As well as if any of these specials happen, you would actually get to do certain things. Uh, Swarm here lets you combine all the attacks of the different rock rats. Uh, and you can also special summon a rock rat. So that's how that would work. But uh, after that, you go ahead and fight the monsters in the hallways and the monsters in the hallways. The monsters in the hallways will move and put themselves uh, the wandering check would move and put themselves in the hallways and so on and so forth and that, that's the basic idea of the game coming back to the other board here simply after you go from one room to the next we'll go to the fifth floor and we'll go ahead and talk about that right now
So after you've gotten to the fifth floor, then what's interesting is going to happen is you're going to be fighting the boss round, which is basically just like the rooms, you're going to take those away, actually. It's going to end up where you're going to be fighting monsters. You're going to have A, monsters in the first area, B, then C, then D, and then finally you're going to fight, be fighting against two of these Zul guards, as well as fighting against the uh, the mounted Zul lord. And you're going to fight these monsters going through them, basically a gauntlet of monsters together as a team. And finally, after you defeat the Zul lord who is mounted, you're going to have to fight him again, just like in a lot of popular videos games he's got this is not my final form and you have to fight him again uh, with a, he's just basically on his feet with his whip and if you can defeat that guy you win the game uh, if your characters die you're going to lose the game well, another interesting thing too is you can actually craft certain items and that comes with uh, the skills decks and the items deck the skills will allow you to gain different skills as you kill monsters you're going to take those and use them to um, increase your skill count based on each of your characters they have different uh, requirements they'll say oh you need this many this many points in order to get this skill and each monster is going to have certain uh, bonus points as well as you can also craft uh, different items from the uh, items deck and it tells you on the top uh, top right hand middle area of the cards what uh, you're going to be getting like organic material or mechanical material and whatnot and you can actually make different items throughout the game you can of course acquire them while going into the rooms but you can also make them if you get the blueprint specifically for maybe a crazy ray gun you can actually put that together and make it during the uh, special action phase, I think. Or actually, when you are when you go into different rooms, you can actually do the crafting action of those rooms. You gotta get lucky though and find them. Uh, you got like RG specials, which are really strong art, art, uh, items or the or armor, and then you got X-ray laser rifles. You got the Mezon rifle and so on and so forth. I don't wanna give them away too many. And then of course you can create like stuff like Jam and the Bland Witch and uh, some Space Fondue, which looks ugh, it's gross, but you can do that to gain health, to gain uh, your food back up and so on and so forth and of course the different special actions occur uh, as you as you go throughout the game there's different things you can do and each of the characters have their own unique aspects as well as uh, they all have their own unique actions too like the medic he can roll once a turn he can use the fate die to roll if he gets the special if he gets lucky and gets the special he'll actually get to heal his heal, heal his allies that are in the same room or something like that they all have their own aspects that do something different and unique depending on the type of character they are it's a it's basically a dungeon crawly style game a little bit of the tactics aspect and the choosing between continuing and pushing forward or staying back and kind of farming um, and trying to get to the last floor and defeating that Zul Lord. So that is the basic idea of how you play the game, The Pit. Let me tell you what I think about it and a couple caveats. Just before we get into the review, let's go ahead and talk about the a little bit of caveats. So the first one here is, you notice in the bottom here, it says a one plus hits. That actually means one plus the floor you're on equals the amount of hits you need in order to defeat this locked area. Something that you probably wouldn't notice on first glance. You're also going to be getting to have these little system administration aspects throughout the game that you're going to be flipping as uh, you go down floor by floor. Sometimes it's just have a nice day where you got power surge. Uh, Ooh, what was that? I feel all tingly in my charge stations. All rooms have one extra charge. Um, let's see, lock down. Increase all locks by two points. Retreat. Remove one monster from every group, and it's a player's choice. And there's just a ton of these things that are going to influence the game based on the floor you go into, and make sure you shuffle this nice and good. You're also going to have player conditions, which will tell you, I was showing you before, these little tokens here, like burning and poison and whatnot. Here they are. Flame, disease, poison, radiation, stunned, and unconscious. They affect players, and they affect creatures alike, and they do different things. Poison means they, you lose a health per turn, and every time, uh, every turn, one of your poison levels will decrease. You got radiation, which does something fairly similar. As stunned, players receive a penalty of minus one attack or defense. Unconscious, player is knocked out, minus one defense, die, so on and so forth. So there's a ton of different uh, little uh, player conditions that are going to affect you. All the monsters in the game have their own specials, they have their own special abilities, and they have their own health and whatnot. The fate dice are always going to be positive or negative. So the first thing for the review now let's talk about is the fact that there's so many different cards. You're going to have monsters and items, and then of course you're going to have the ability to craft different items. And these are the craftables. You got recipes for the mesmer cannon and the roast beef here and then you can also get basic items like the brawler armor the force field belt and the bullet mill these things are going to let you progress throughout the game and they're very very strong and very very useful but of course there are the d-ranked ones and you're not going to get those until you get to the higher floors the higher the floor the more likely you can get better armor and get better weapons and you'll be able to choose between maybe a range weapon that has ammo and one that doesn't the art in the game is super cool too it's all pixelated kind of style art it reminds me of a video game and that's of course because it's kind of based off of one of their video games the pit so it does work 
work well in that aspect. It is a dungeon crawler, so it can be a pretty long game. In fact, the original uh, review copy I have here has 10 floors. They reduced it to five, which I think is a good idea. It keeps the game not being too long, but still being enough to where there's tons of different options and abilities that you can do and choose from, as well as the ability to craft. I like the X decks here that allow you to kind of create your own skills, uh, put the monsters whenever you're searching. You don't have to look through the A, B, C, and D decks. You can actually just search through these monster decks, which is super nice. And of course, the items as well, being able to craft them and whatnot is super cool. I like the monster track because it kind of increases the level of difficulty as the game goes on. You don't want to stay too long on each floor because there's more and more monsters that are going to come out and it's going to get more and more difficult. So you have to always progress and if you don't it can get kind of nasty and get kind of dangerous. The effect that the ability to have these different rooms have different abilities and do different things such as foraging skills or the ability to um, craft different items. You've got ones that are going to allow you to compute skill roll and uh, they based on the different uh, roles and skills that you have for your character and of course you can increase those if you want as well. You have the ability to unlock and lock doors, which is nice. And of course, there's different monsters throughout the game. You got the D monsters here, like the feral zoo female. You've got a cow, and while it has a lot of health, it doesn't do a lot of stuff. And you've got, of course, the zool commanders, the uh, zool lord, the computos, uh, hop, hop knights, the viper kings, and so on and so forth. And they all have their own unique abilities, which makes the game very, very unique. I like that aspect. I like all the different characters that have their own unique aspects, and the art is really, really cool. The game can be pretty long, though, and if you don't like dungeon crawlers, this is going to be one of those games where you're probably going to pass on. But if you do enjoy it, if you like a lot of depth and dexterity, a lot of different dice rolling, a little bit of luck, a little bit of choice, well, a lot of bit of choice as to where you want to go and how you want to do it, and working together. It can play one, one player, it can play four players, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change the way the pacing works of the game, or the length of the game for the most part, but it gives you a little bit of like communication, and you'll be able to decide what you want to do and how you want to do it, and how you want to work with your, your players. And staying out of these hallways, because the more you stay in the hallways, the longer, the faster the monster is going to go through the track. Overall though, the game is really cool, it's really in engaging, and it gives you that communication ability and I think it's something you probably want to check out especially if you like dungeon crawlers if you like a little bit of the video game aspect this kind of brings video games into a board game definitely check out the game the pit the board game all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video you can check out the rest of your videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all does help and we greatly appreciate it as well as checking out the pit the board game in the description below if it's something you think you'd be interested in checking out the fate dice are so interesting and unique that's a really cool mechanic remember this is a prototype so all rules may change and be different as well as the component quality of the game and the miniatures. Also go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com. We have the blog post giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We're currently giving away a game on AEG called The Space Base. Really fun little Machi Koro killer. As well as check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They get tons of great games there. Alright guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I love ya and I look forward to seeing you next time.